Okay, so we are recording and I am Susan Leedy with Mods for Quads and here with Raji Ari. Her name is so fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Raji is actually part of Mods for Quads as well. Um, Raji, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and just quickly physically what you struggle with as far as paralysis is concerned. Okay. I am Raji Ari. I uh, was born in India and I contracted polio um, at a very young age. And basically that left my legs uh, completely atrophied and uh, I had nerve damage. And so I've been work walking with just um, braces on my legs and crutches pretty much my whole life. So Raji and I met because actually she was watching an interview that I did online um, about neuroplasticity. I was talking with Tom Hayes. I had worked with him. He's an NBC producer who had a tumor in his back and who um, actually was partially paralyzed because of the tumor. And we retrained him how to use some of his muscles and use his brain to get those moving again. And so Raji called me and said she would be interested in the work as well. So what we thought we would do, she hasn't really experienced the work yet because of COVID, is we thought we would do little, little exercise and educational tracks on neural plasticity, how to get your brain to change your body, how to get your neurons to potentially grow and find pathways to hopefully get movement and improvement in your, in your um, where you're struggling with that. So this is our first little clip and I'm um, trying to keep track of time. So Raji, do you know anything about neuroplasticity? Other than the, you know, book that you recommended where, you know, you can essentially rewire your brain to <laughs> uh, heal itself. So yes, pretty much. So like I recommended a book to Raji from Norman Doidge, D-O-I-D-G-E. We'll put it on the website. And it talks about the brain's way of healing. He has two books and it's just scientific after scientific study on how the brain actually works and how they've tracked it through um, all kinds of medical studies and actually by dissecting the brains um, to show how we can improve our, our bodies and our mental health and our physical health through the way we think. So neuroplasticity, the definition of it is the brain's ability to change itself based on mental intention. So we once thought that we were born with our brain and it couldn't change. It was what it was, um, it finished growing by the time you were about 21 and then that was it. Um, but that is not the case. Now we know that it can drastically change um, it can take over for other parts of the brain that are down. So if you have a traumatic brain injury, you potentially have other parts of your brain that can pick up responsibility for that piece that's missing, um, as well as encourage that piece that's missing to regrow itself and heal. So it's just the coolest organ ever, really. <laughs> um, and so what I was hoping to do is kind of talk about your current location with polio. Um, we just went through a little bit of a discussion as to what Raji's workouts are per day. And she really focuses on upper body, building your upper body, keeping your core really super strong so that you're able to efficiently and fluidly move around, right? Mm -hmm. So the other day, Raji and I were speaking and um, I was talking to her about the relationship that she has with her legs and if she really focuses on utilizing them and walking with them and or if she's kind of just i mean not so much mentally attached and using her upper body to take care of the lower body so i'm going to turn that over to you raji and just have you tell us what is your relationship with your legs and do you focus on them? And what would you like to see as an outcome with your legs? Yeah. So honestly, I hadn't really thought about that until you pointed it out to me the other day. And I think because so much of, um, you know, just how we're ingrained is based on, you know, doctors saying, 
oh, like, you know, this is, this is what you have and this is what you're stuck with. And so um, it, is, it is definitely a shift in mentality. And um, so I haven't, my whole life, I've pretty much just been like, this is, you know, how I am. And I haven't really given much love to my legs because, you know, it is a part of me that I, is frustrating because I, I haven't been able to, you know, use them how I would like to, obviously. And so it would be wonderful if I could strengthen them and um, be able to be a lot more independent and um, have, I mean, I'm, I'm very independent, but I'm saying in terms of like, you know, I don't necessarily want to have to wear braces on my legs and when I'm out and about. Um, so that would be great. But yeah, I don't, I don't really focus too much on my legs in mentally. And I think um, that was really interesting to me when you had mentioned that the other day where you were like, do you give any love to your legs? <laughs> so. Well, I think it's a really great point um, to, to consider that one of the whole purposes of the website Mods for Quads and our mission is to get people to come to our website for 10, 20 minutes a day and just focus on not disconnecting from the parts of our body that aren't working. So if we even mentally um, connect with our bodies, it makes a difference. They've done studies. There's some of those studies in that book I gave you. They had a, three groups. They had one group where they told these guys that they were just gonna sit in a room for a certain period of time every day. Then they had a second group. They told the second group of people to pretend like you're lifting dumbbells, 30 pound dumbbells and do three reps of 20. And then they had them do that every day. This went on for two or three weeks, I believe. I'd have to look up the exact study. And then they had a third group where they actually gave them the dumbbells and they had them actually lift every day for three weeks. And at the end of the study, obviously the first group had zero change in their muscles. The second group had a 23% gain in muscle mass just by intentionally thinking that they were building their muscles um, you know, without really doing it. And then the third group, they grew by like 33% or 38% or something like a 13% difference in the actual muscle mass gain from group two to group three. So I do see when I have, they're working with clients that, are, um, that have spinal cord injuries it's very interesting to watch the people that are connected and using in their bodies for even um, like if you watch Adam speak, he uses his hands and he, he's in his body versus somebody that is not actively thinking about that. You can tell, it's like you can tell there's a disconnection. Um, on our website on the Contact Us page, there's a video of Johnny and Adam and Johnny is newly injured and just trying to get his way back and figure out where he is in space, you know, the proprioception in our bodies, like, you know, where are we? So we're going to work on getting back in touch with your legs and using some amazing tools that, um, that I want to teach all of you so that, you know, 20 minutes a day, you are aware now of how to connect to your legs. Mm -hmm. So we have been going for about, let's just talk for a couple more minutes because I want to get one slide in. I want to educate you a little bit on neuroplasticity and um, see if I can. My uh, presentation skills are still <laughs> needing to be slightly worked on. Um, okay, can you see that? I, don't, I just see you right now. What? I only see you. <laughs> you do? What the heck? Oh, for crying out loud, we might have to come back to this. Yeah, there's a share screen button, I think. Well, I don't know why it's not. Wait, oh, there we go. how about now? Yep. Okay. So this is the slide that I want to show you. Um, Okay, so neuroplasticity is the phenomenon that the brain can change itself, structure and function based on mental intention. So we already discussed that and I told you about the bicep study. There's some other ones I can tell you about later. But what we have discovered is that it's more like a plant than a machine and it's adaptive and malleable. 
neurons that fire together wire together. So the more focus we have on connecting with our legs, we're actually going to build new neurons to hopefully find pathways back to them, no matter how long it's been um, that you haven't been really connecting with them. It doesn't seem to matter. Time frame is important, but there's always the possibility of reconnecting. And <clears throat> repeated mental experience leads to those structural changes, including touch, sound, vibration, and visual visualization. So we'll go through looking at all the ways our brain is so fantastic, you know, like what's the difference between us having a memory versus a vision versus um, an imagination, you know, all of these tools, these crazy things our brain does, we're actually going to put to work with your legs. So it's going to produce changes, both mentally and physically. Um, and it, it, is you can analyze it basically from a, an fMRI and I'll show you some pictures of some brains later as far as how that works and how we can fast track that healing. Um, so I think that is pretty much where I want to leave us off today. I have um, next time we meet Raji, what I was hoping we could do is show you walking. Okay. So I'm not sure we're going to have to set up the screen so that we can show that next time. Um, and so anyway, that's our first lesson for neuroplasticity. Yay. <laughs> so Yay. I need to focus more on loving my legs. <laughs> yes, connecting to those legs. Even give them a self-massage to start, start out this week. But um, I can't wait to teach you how to do this. And thank you all for listening. And we'll be back in touch next week. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.